Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Hydra. We are here with Roll Corruption today on the first video I have on GM tips. I will call it. This will be part of a larger series, and in no particular order, we're going to be tackling some of the issues that GMs and perhaps even players come across when playing in tabletop roleplay games. Now, this will be system agnostic and apply to hopefully all of them. And we're going to start with the problem today of, from the GM's perspective, the players aren't interacting with this world I've created. There are just beautiful things everywhere, fantastic NPCs, and my players just aren't motivated to interact with or explore with these creations of mine. And perhaps from a player's point of view, it could be, hmm, there's a lot of stuff in this world, but it's not particularly interesting to me. Or perhaps even just subconsciously, it's not interesting enough for me to engage with. Now we're going to come back to the player's point of view because we're going to be thinking as GMs for the majority of this, but I still think as players there'll be a few things that you can take away. And so we come to the goal of this video, which is obviously by the end of this video, you're going to have a much better handle on how to fix this, a few strategies you can implement and a few ways you can evaluate your own plot and story and creation in order to make it something your players truly interact with. And you will also understand why this slide in particular is the most important slide within the entire video. Now, just before we get started, a little bit of credit goes out to Matthew Coville and David Mehmet, not because I've spoken to any of them, but because I've watched their videos. And one, the former, is available on YouTube, and if you don't listen to the gentleman's work, he is light years above in terms of experience and quality from myself, so you should really listen to him. And he's just great to listen to. Uh, David Mehmet has a course on Masterclass on Dramatic Writing. I'd strongly, strongly recommend it to anyone that's GMing, and even if you're not writing, you're just creating, I still think he has a very good course on there that is really worth um, listening in on. So they have largely inspired this video, and a lot of this will be paraphrasing what they've put out, but I do think I've at least tried to chew on things a little bit and put it in a way that makes sense to me. And let's start by saying that plot is all there is, or all there is is plots. Let us first start by defining plot, and that will make sense as to the previous statements. Plot is a transition from A to B. Two points. This could be geographic. We could have players moving from one town to another town. Plot could be, and that obviously wouldn't be the entirety of explaining the plot, but as an overall arcing theme, it could be geographic, it could be psychological, it could be the revelation of one's own heinous crimes, it could be self-discovery, it could be a transition between two states, two points. You get the idea. Now, A and B are two very important things to define as well. A is a precipitating event that, at least if you're writing a descriptive uh, play or something like that, a dramatic play, A should happen within the play. And this is the point in time, the precipitating event that motivates the adventurers or the hero into going on a journey. That is to say it sets up the necessity of the journey and the implications of failure of the journey as well. So both you as the writer the GM, them as the player, and the audience, who are everyone combined, and if anyone else was watching, everyone is on board on the same page as to what's going on and why, and why it should be done because they know what would happen if it wasn't done. Now, I've certainly made the mistake before of not having this precipitating event in the session and just simply starting saying, look, here's what you've been hired to do. This is your thing. I would now switch that slightly and say, if you're starting a campaign as a band of mercenaries that have been hired to take a noble lady from A to B, that's not your plot. I don't think so. I think that's your background. Your plot will happen when she goes missing, when she gets kidnapped, when she gets implicated for being a witch and you are tied in with, and the whole plot is going to be you going from a state of accused of being a witch's accomplice to freedom or liberating yourself, uh, whatever the word is where you get rid of the nasty consequences. 
you know what I mean, hopefully. So this is where the plot kicks in. So this precipitating event is something that I think is essential, and it is essential that the gravity of it is sold. Now, I think one, one strategy I would employ is to have your players have a mini plot first, something they've been hired to do, like this escort mission, and perhaps even have a session or two of exploration where they can just go through the ropes and see how they get on with the world. And at that point in time, you as the GM could say, OK, I think actually this type of plot will suit the group a bit more. They, they seem to just want to go out and fight stuff all the time. So we're going to have a bit more of that. Or maybe this is going to be a very political plot. The plot will be determined by the precipitating event. And so B is the resolution. It's the point where the plot has been accomplished. And if you can't envision what B should look like, not how you get there, but what it should look like, then A hasn't been clear enough. It needs to be something they can see and grasp and hold on to and above all, shoot towards. Because if they can't shoot towards it, everything's going to go wrong. And you're going to have players wandering around aimless and bored and not interacting with stuff. We're going to delve into the reasons why in a moment. So now we come to story, which is entirely relevant to this. Now, story is going to be the series of incidents that occur while moving from A to B. So scenes within plays, books, films, etc. Adventures, problems, you could use different words to define it. But at least according to Aristotle, and he was certainly a wiser man than myself, incidents are what it should be about. Incidents that specifically move the character or the hero from A to B. And if it's not assisting in that journey, it should be taken out. Now, we'll come back to that in a moment. But why incidents, first of all? Why are we not telling stories as human beings all around campfires about non-incidents? Well, simply put, there's nothing to gain from it. There's no knowledge to extract from it. There's no lesson to be learned. There's nothing for our brains to emulate, and there's nothing interesting in there, quite frankly. If you've ever listened to someone tell you about a vacation that was just, quite frankly, a vacation, that's very much like going on an adventure that doesn't have an incident in it. Because it's just... Blair. There's nothing to get. So, each scene we have, each session we have, each adventure we go on really is a sequence of incidents. And that doesn't have to mean it's a combat encounter. That can be going into an inn and trying to get information from an individual. That's an incident still. It doesn't necessarily have to go well. It doesn't have to go badly for it to be an incident. But the players can go in there and be presented with a problem. Maybe the barman doesn't want to give them any information right now, but they know that he has it. Maybe he's asked for a bribe and they can't afford it. That's an incident. That's a problem for our heroes to then think about and come up with a solution so that then they can progress on their journey from A to B. And I would say as well, although within writing schools, the philosophy is that anything that doesn't take your group from A to B, cut it out, I would say instead, maybe put something in that makes them get from A to B. Example, you get a random encounter in the woods, something I've completely moved away from, but now looking to bring back in a little bit. Okay, fine, random encounter in the woods. What could be more boring than fighting 10 goblins and then moving on? Ugh. Fine, you got a bit of loot and experience perhaps, but still overall dull. What's more exciting, at least more exciting for a more varied pool of players, is that if the goblins had a prisoner and the cousin of that prisoner owns the tavern in the next town and they may be able to help the group get to where they're going. Now, it doesn't always have to be that convenient. So everywhere they go, there is something that makes it a lot easier for what they're doing next. But perhaps they will give them and a magical potion that will heal an affliction that one of the group members is going to get at a later point in time. It's that saying that if there's a shotgun on the wall in scene one and it's not in the film afterwards, it had no place being there. You can see this in all TV shows that you watch. Whenever they show a sword or a dagger, it's like, yep, that's coming back. Now, it doesn't mean everything has to be foreshadowed to an extreme 
uh, to an extreme degree, the group could kill the goblins, go to the next town, the town could find out they've killed the goblins, and celebrate because they've been liberated, perhaps helping them then to move on with their journey. It doesn't have to be quite so railroady. There can still be a fairly loose narrative sandbox approach here where you give the players simply gratitude and a group of individuals willing to help them. And then they can cherry pick which one they think will be suited. So now we move on to going back to A to B. Now, why is A and the definition of the, the problem so important. Well, this is because we have to give the context and consequences to the incidents. Remember earlier when I said if players are going from A to B, they need to know what the fail state is. They need to know that if they don't get to Helmgart by the end of the second day, the princess is going to die. The noble will be executed. Their family will disown them. There has to be something of a known fail state, because that is what makes your players invested into figuring out solutions around the problems. It's not enough to just say, you need to get from here to here because I've paid you five gold crown, and then expect your players to be interested in doing so. If they're going there to save the damsel in distress, and to get a large dowry, and she's particularly attractive, and she has a magical sword. I mean, maybe you want to tone it down a little bit, but in either in either case, you've got a reward there. But what's the fail state? If you don't, your brother is going to marry them. The brother that you hate. The worst evil man that you can imagine. And the princess will be doomed. At least that's a duality to it, because, and I say because, it's not just a case of finding your wheel has broken off of your cart mid-road and saying, oh gosh darn, now I can't get the princess. It's, I need to get there because X, Y, Z. And therefore, when the wheel falls off it, err. Whenever you see a problem arise in a film, you as the audience, the writer, the hero are all on the same page, which is, damn, this can't happen because I need to do this, because I'm doing this. And the audience has to be able to visualize what the consequence of that wheel falling off is. The princess may die. The princess will marry your brother and he will be a terrible husband. That is how you make players interact with your world, because by doing so, you've presented them with a goal such as within the beginning of this video, I presented you with a goal, which was to learn how to fix this issue. Hopefully you're still on the same page with me, but this, this shapes the world and this changes the world. A shopkeeper can be many different things simultaneously in terms of meaning. A shopkeeper can just be someone you go into and sell loot. That's sort of, a, that's a given. Most players would be like, yeah, I don't have any loot to sell. There's no reason to go into a shop, but if a player has an item they need to get rid of, perhaps they need to try and sell it to get some coin to get to the next town, then a shopkeeper is someone that can buy my book. There are a billion examples of what you can do, but by presenting a goal, the world becomes something different as it becomes a means to help the player achieve that goal. And I would say as a GM at that point, if you're creating loads of stuff because it's a cool idea, despite the fact it's never going to be relevant to their goals, you probably made too much, <laughs> perhaps. Um, but it is something I would think about because players are going to view the world that way in most cases. You may have some really high in openness that are happy to just play around and dip their toes into everything. But for the majority, that won't be the case. And we move on now to why are players not thinking outside of the box when it comes to these incidents that they've come across. They're, they're trying to get from town A to town B and they found out that the road wardens on that road are charging an extortionate amount. And for those that don't pay, they are being executed. So the group are gonna have to think of something or go around. Perhaps you can leave that as a choice, perhaps not. But okay, the players are having to now think outside the box. If the players are deciding what to do instantly, I would say you've not put enough thoughts into the problem. If the problem has an obvious solution, 
it's not interesting to the players, and it's not really satisfactory in terms of the hero's story. A really good quote by David Mehmet is thinking the whole time, this is going to kill my hero. If you're not thinking that, or this is going to kill me, me being the hero, if you're not thinking that, it's not a good enough problem. And chances are you've started with the solution of I want a scene where the players are going to fight X, Y, Z, rather than coming up with a creative problem they're going to have to solve along the way. Now, starting with a creative problem can be that, well, simply put, the guard, highly equipped, they won't be killable, most likely, and anyone that's being t pulled over by them and being charged five gold crown, which the players would never have that on their person, they're being executed. So the players can't just say, oh yeah, well, it's obvious we have to kill them. Good luck with that. You can have the, the old man in the tavern say, well, the last people tried that, they're all dead. And no offence, but they were better fighters than you by the looks of it. Okay, murder hobo option out of the window. Now the adventurers have to think. So it doesn't mean every encounter has to be thus, but a problem needs to be of sufficient complexity to make players think. If the obvious solution is, well, we hit it, we cast punch, then as a GM, if you're being frustrated at the lack of creativity, it stems from your lack of creativity. Painful to admit sometimes, and I know it's a flaw of mine, but something to work on. Ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate your comments down below on this. This is my first attempt at some, some GM advice for you all. And I would really appreciate you sharing this out, um, liking, subscribing, notifications, all of that stuff. Join me on my journey as I'll be trying to do one of these a week. And hopefully by the end of this, we'll have a decent series where we can really talk about some of the problems GMs will come across as storytellers. I'd also love to see your ideas for videos down in the comments. And I will see you next time. Take care.